Welcome to the Church Solutions Podcast, brought to you by JSL Solutions. The Church Solutions Podcast is designed to help equip you and your church in the use of technology and other tools and services. And now, here are your hosts, Steve Lacey and Phil Thompson. Well, hello there, and welcome again to another edition of the Church Solutions Podcast. Hi, my name is Steve Lacey. And I am Phil Thompson. We are with JSL Solutions. We're a tech company that helps churches stream online through the product streamingchurch.tv. Hi. What else do we do? <laughs> what else do we do? <laughs> um, we do um, lots of things for churches. We have uh, an app that we've set up for churches and that they can customize through Church App Live. And we also have our MyFlock.com product that um, provides uh, content management and a church management system online. Yeah. And and we do these podcasts. I just want to get this out here because if you're new to our podcast, you might be wondering, who are, who are these guys? Uh, we're, we're two guys that are involved in our churches. And as Steve just mentioned, JSL Solutions, he's actually the, the founder and the president. And, and we have a heart for churches. We have a heart for people involved in churches, pastors, volunteers. And so we talk about tech-related things, but we also talk about ministry related things and life related things because in my opinion they all kind of go together. together yeah they do. and and what are we going to talk about today so today we're going to talk about we're going to try to answer the question is never offline good for your ministry and yeah, your it, life and it sounds like you're still online by that background noise <laughs> right now. i thought you shut off your phone no, someone's trying to get a hold of me, so right. we'll, we'll wait on that. We'll just let it go. So this will fit in real well with what we're talking about. So is never online good for your church or your life for that matter, or maybe even if you have a business? And and so what we're going to talk about today is really the, the whole online deal. And, and uh, you know, there's been some studies out lately about uh, how we're all so connected now with our smartphones, with our... Uh, computers, right. our tablets. Yeah. So a lot of people may, I mean, initially when you say online, you go, oh, that means me sitting in front of my computer. Yeah. But that's really not the case, right? Not, not anymore. That, no, no. Not, and in fact, you're, speaking of which, you you just got something you're waiting for. You're really excited about this, I can tell yes, you. You're waiting for something yes. to come in the mail. What is it? So I am, uh, I got interested in, and based on some reviews, in a smartwatch. So I'm bringing my my online connectedness closer to my face, I guess, by uh, so purchasing the, a smart uh, smartwatch. He was getting a smartwatch, and we, we we can talk about that in another podcast. But uh, so basically, we're a bunch of hypocrites here. But we're gonna <laughs> we're gonna talk about online. Let me just read you some studies. Here's a study done by a fellow. Actually, there's several out here, but you really need to hear this, folks, because uh, I think it's important. Uh, I don't know if you've ever heard of Tom Phillips. Uh, I never have, but he's a senior writer for BuzzFeed UK. So it's not the BuzzFeed United States based. It's the it's the BuzzFeed based out of the UK. Uh-huh. I don't know much about BuzzFeed, but they do have some really kind of funny little things they put on on online. And here's something he said that uh, he said that uh, while online we lose the equivalent of 14 days a year of relaxing and thinking while online we lose again, the equivalent of 18 days a year of social socializing with people offline. Mm -hmm. So I guess that's relationships with people, you know, you would see, or you hope to see 21 days a year you lose of educational activities, uh, 43 days a year of sleep just because you're online, I guess, I guess this is a, in a year, 98 days a year of work. That, that can't be a year. He must be talking about in our lifetime. He says 13 minutes of every hour oh, online. Oh, I don't know. I mean, I know that it's very tempting when you're at work to go online and check some things yeah. that will take away from your work day. Yeah, maybe so. 13 minutes of every hour online is spent on a social network, such as Facebook. Five minutes is spent shopping. I think your wife spends more than that. She doesn't listen to these podcasts. Does she? <laughs> I'll be in trouble if she does. Nine minutes is spent watching videos on sites such as YouTube. And three minutes is spent watching porn. <laughs> so hopefully you're not doing that. But these sources come from uh, Technology Policy Institute, uh, Internet Advertising Bureau, 
And as I mentioned, uh, Tom uh, Tom Phillips is, is one of these guys who put this together. So we're saying all this. And, and by the way, he's saying it's not necessarily a bad thing that you're online. He's just saying if you look at it, these are the stats you need to be aware of. Right, the things you're missing out on exactly. while you are online. Yeah, so uh, – and, and for us, you know, like, okay, so with our company, JSL Solutions, we have three products and we have three – Different websites, Which are all online products. Yeah, and and <laughs> exactly, and and we actually have another website. We have New Media Ministries TV, and we have a Facebook page. We have Twitter. We have LinkedIn pages. We have all that stuff, and <clears throat> it's primarily my job to kind of monitor those things and keep up with them. In fact, we even have software <clears throat> where uh, <clears throat> we can, if you go to one of our websites like StreamingChurch.tv, and you're checking out our products, uh, there's a little software thing that pops up and says, would you like more help? And, and you can say yes. And then you'll be connected to a live person on the other end. Could be me, could be you, Steve, you know, and, and we actually will converse with people, uh, you know, that are on our websites looking and asking questions. So here's my, here's my typical day. I'll just tell you what mine is. And I get up around 6 a.m., My wife works for a law firm, and uh, she's not a lawyer, but she works for some lawyers. And she gets up about that time, maybe a little earlier, actually. And I will get up about 6, have a cup of coffee with her. And, uh, you know, we have a lot of customers East Coast. We're out here in Arizona. We actually have customers, other continents, other countries. And so I've just made it a habit of opening up our monitoring uh, software and so I just usually about 6.15, uh, or if I'm lazy, 6.30 in the morning, just turn it on, and then I'll go and have coffee with my wife and maybe catch the news. And occasionally I will get pinged from somebody, either on the East Coast, you know, because it's 9 a.m. On, on their side. Or oh, Actually, I've had it on at night sometimes, forgot to turn it off, and I've had people ping me. You know, yeah. at 8 o'clock at night, which means it's 11 o'clock their time or something like that. So I'm connected as soon as I get up. And by the way, I'm checking my emails on my phone while I'm watching the news in case one of our customers is desperate and needs help. Um, and then I'm, I'm on, and I've even got an app on my phone so that if I'm away from my computer and I still want to monitor our three main websites, I can still do that through the app. Right. And, and so if somebody has a question, my phone will ping. And I can literally... Wherever I'm at, having lunch or whatever I'm doing, I can respond to that question. So I guess I'm probably pretty well connected, aren't I? Oh, I would say so. And I'm very similar in that my day is typically, and it's probably a lot lot like other people, is you're checking your email before you even getting out of bed. that, That is me. I'm definitely somebody that is online quite a bit. That we're here to talk about is is you know never being offline a good thing for your ministry or your church, and I know for me, and it's actually you don't begin to appreciate some of this until you start to put things into practice mm-hmm. of sorts. And um, I just did, just recently um, spent took some time and got away from all the technology and actually went out. And towards my backyard in an evening uh, a little while ago and just sat and just soaked in the 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 great weather the cool breeze and it was just really revital or uh what's the word for it i was really revitalizing yeah revitalizing if that's such a word Mm -hmm. um to to get out there and, and just to get away from everything and and just you really you come away with a new with a new appreciation for man the weather and your health and uh, time of day that whole sort of thing. So it is it can invigorate you to get away. Well, we kicked uh, you know, and again in the spirit of hypocrisy here, uh, my son is a big gamer. He's 15 years old, and so he's on Xbox a lot. And he got disciplined because he did something stupid, and so we t- we took him a week. He was a week away from his Xbox. And actually, he did very well, and uh, we've actually spent some evenings together uh, as a family, and it's actually been, I think, very healthy. Uh, you know, as, now he'll probably, once his 
time his is up, he'll be back he'll at probably it. Probably be back on, on it. But so uh, so I think we're establishing the fact here that that um, it's easy to get sucked into being online. And you know, so for you and I we're running a business, but there's also people that are you know not running a business, but yet are still watching YouTube videos and cats and dogs and you know all those kind of things facebook and so what we want to get at here is uh, i think most people would agree that it's probably a good thing to do to set some kind of boundaries right right even though it's easy to get carried away and and you know you're getting this online smart watch is that what you just said is that what it's called yeah smart watch you know i'd love to see it when it comes but you know we're checking our phones at lunch or dinner in the middle of conversation. So it's probably not the best thing for our real interpersonal relationships. Right. So where do we start? If, if we're going to do something here, because I'm assuming people listening to this podcast, you're in listening to it because you're involved with your church and you're involved in some area of the tech. Yeah. And I think this is an area that um, it's really easy to slip into this zone. And I'm guilty of it as well, where, wow, I am, always online. I've always, you know, I've either got my phone with me or I'm on the computer or doing work where you're always online. And, and it's um, what you need to do. I think number one is just establish that getting some time away from being online is a good, healthy thing to do. And so it's going to take some discipline. So you've got to plan for it and be proactive about getting some, you know, non-online time. So are you suggesting we should do this a little bit every day or maybe just oh, plan think, for a day out of seven. I, I think there's, I think you should do it every day and there's an element of it where there's some, just some uh, healthy habits you need to develop even while you are online. There's uh, if you're bent over and staring at a computer screen for four hours at a time, there's a dramatic eye strain that you're going to have that you're going to develop from just looking at something that's two feet away. So there's things that you can do within every hour to pull yourself away that's going to be good for your health. Okay. You know, if it's something as simple as looking above the screen at an object across the room every 20 minutes and focus okay. on that and then go back to where you're at, that's a, that's a healthy thing as well. Okay. But as well as um, time during the day or even uh, days during the week or weeks during the month. So, okay. yeah. Well, let's get practical here and then. So let's... And some of us, we kind of know this, but we probably need to be reminded. Let's look at some of these tips here that we've got. Um, one of the tips is when it comes to being online and limiting your online time, try to limit your time inside of your house. So in other words, I'm assuming this means when you walk out of the house, or maybe in this case, the office, maybe when you walk out of that place, you're not constantly checking your phone. Yeah. Checking your watch, your wristwatch. That's now your smartwatch. Right. right. Which, is this? I mean, is um, you know, we're talking about we're talking about the um, establishing some zones where you're not online. Right. That's within your home. Okay. So one would be get, just don't look, don't bother going online when you're outside of the home, or outside of your office in your home, or well, or there's I mean. You know, one practical thing would be just you know, set some areas up within your home that you don't technolo take technology with you or take your ability to be online, okay. like a bathroom or <laughs> – I'm not quite this bad yet. There's not an online device in my shower or anything. But <laughs> <laughs> So this might be uh, – might fall into the category of TMI, but I have found so – I, 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 I have an Instagram account which if you don't know what Instagram is, you might consider it for your church or your ministry because it is a good searchable deal. Pinterest is another one. And so a lot of times to kill my, to kill the time in the bathroom, the only time I ever look at Instagram is on my phone in the, in bathroom. the bathroom. It's the only time I ever look at it uh -huh. because it's just a nice change of pace. and everything. But anyway, that was probably too much information. All right, so you're <laughs> saying – Put up some kind of boundaries within your home. Yeah, set up some some boundaries within the home. You, okay. you know, either whether it's a bathroom or say maybe a kitchen. Okay. You know, I'm in the kitchen. I'm not going to be uh, okay. online or viewing screens or wherever okay. it may be. You know, All set right. up some areas that when you're participating in that area, you're you know, you're offline. So l let me ask you another question here. So what about you know if you're working with a church and you're working with volunteers? 
because a lot of I've heard a lot of people say, well, when you leave your church, you know, if you're uh, on staff at a church or something or or whatever it might be, that you don't go back online. But what if you're working with volunteers who are working during the day at a secular job, or maybe even you're working during the day at a secular job? The only time you can connect with some of these people is is in the evenings, right? All right. You mean through social networking or, yeah, or whatever? Social networking or emails. All right. So, I mean, what do you do with that situation? Well, I think just, again, I, mean, I think you just want to budget yourself. You okay. want to. You don't want to set it up so that oh, I'm at work all day and then I come home and I'm online until I go to bed. So, right, so. you just want to set up some either places within your home or maybe you set up some hours within your day that say, hey, I'm going to uh, read my it. Bible offline. <laughs> uh, you can even do that online. But, okay. uh, you know, right. you're going to focus on something else during either this time of the day or, you know, when I'm in this part of the house. See, now I have a guy who um, I work with. He's, uh, he's, bi- he's a bivocational pastor, and he travels actually quite a bit. He's with a company that does priority management, so he, he works. He flies all over the country. And one of the things I've noticed with him is that he will never um, – he blocks – he has certain blocks of time set up, so he's bivocational. So when he's at his secular job, you're not going to talk to this guy about church stuff. Uh-huh. He just won't. He won't respond to your emails. He won't respond to your text messages. You know. And then when he's done with that block of time, then he'll respond to church-related stuff. Now, uh, part of my job, it's a little part-time gig I have, is it is in the area of kind of an executive pastor, executive director. So it drives me nuts because I can't get any re- response from him until a certain part of the time. I mean, I totally understand why he's doing it. And I, 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 he's probably right. Okay. Yeah. He's training, he's training you as well. Right. And well, said, I, well, I shouldn't try to get yes. a hold of Mark because yeah. it's before five o'clock and I've learned that. I, can't. I don't think he has a problem with me sending emails or even text, but he just won't respond to it. Right, right. You know, so I, I, until later, right. You know, so That's some discipline in place sounds like. Yeah, I mean, it definitely sounds like a good thing. All right, so where are we at here? We're kind of on this rabbit trail of tips. So the the second one was actually talking actually talking to your colleagues. Okay. So instead of instead of say texting, e- instant okay. messaging, um, facebooking or emailing, right. um, you know, pull out the the phone or go visit um, the person and actually begin to to talk with the colleagues. I have this gal. I, again, it, this goes back to my little part-time gig on the weekends. I have this gal that I have to work with at this church and it's a nightmare to text her. I mean, she doesn't give me the right responses back. Her text messages are like, uh, cryptic or they're just open-ended. So, you know, can we meet at Starbucks at 5 PM today? And maybe she'll respond a little bit later. Uh, she'll say, uh, six o'clock Wednesday. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's like, so then you respond, well, no, I meant today at 5 PM. Or are you saying you can meet this Wednesday at six or next? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And so I finally have given up and all I do now is I just call her. Call her I usually that, get yeah. a voicemail, yeah. but I just call her. Yeah. I've got it's a frustrating. Uh, kind of a, I have a, a similar experience, but slightly different in that um, in my former days in the aerospace business, um, email was king. And at the time, everybody had Blackberry, so you're getting your email to your Blackberry all the time. And I was actually talking with my boss. This happened often. And, um, you know, I, I tried to establish some uh some some habits that when somebody came into my office and we were talking if my phone rang or something was happening I'm not, I'm not going to say oh you know I got to distract I kept my focus on them actually I work so I work for this boss and we would be in the middle of a conversation and all of a sudden like mid sentence even mid even in the middle of one of his sentences he'd reach down and grab his phone 
because it had vibrated and he's and he stops and is reading the email and I just I couldn't imagine anything more rude we're you know we were talking in a hallway and then all of a sudden he stops and, and he's the justification well is you know, it could have been my boss and if it was my boss I've got a and actually I was not uh, a subscriber to this policy and actually got to in trouble a couple of times when uh, I didn't respond to an email within minutes hmm. of receiving it. So, but it, that's just an example, I think, of being so tuned in to the, you know, the leash that you, that people had via electronics or the people that do have is just developed some, some bad habits, some bad interpersonal habits. You know, you sacrifice even talking to people. And that you risk offending people, you wow. take this too far. Wow, that's 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 yeah, that's that's not hard to hard to believe. I'm sure it happens all the time. Yeah, and I'm right, sure so, lots of people have been talking to someone and they, they glance down yeah, at their phone while they're talking. Yeah. All right, so um, got a few more minutes here. So we're talking about never being online, uh, or how, what are we titling this thing? Never online good for your church or your life is, is never is offline never offline yes <laughs> i'm confused i'm on medication today uh, so um the bottom line is y- you need to take some time off you, you got to block some time off yeah it's um, healthy to get as i mentioned earlier just a few minutes even during the hour or some time during the day to yeah. to get offline so the last or the third thing we had in here one of the tips was uh, eat meals without your smartphone. <laughs> so put it somewhere else. Yeah, put it somewhere else. And now my wife um, is very good at this. She, she'll mention, you know, if we're going to go somewhere, she'll rarely take her phone with her. Um, she will, she goes to work out. She doesn't take her phone with her. And I am not to that level yet. I, am, I still um, rely on my phone mainly for, you know, business and that sort of thing. Um but um, yeah, this is a tip. Go and eat meals without your phone. Leave it somewhere else where you can't hear it or can't get to it. Uh, you know, I think part of our issue, Steve, you and I, is, you know, we're, so, we're really big on customer service. And it really does separate us from a lot of companies. And so I think in the back, at least in the back of my mind, I'm thinking, okay, I want to serve. When I get an email that comes across or a phone call, uh, my first impression is, well, I want to help these guys, you know, uh, it's streaming or a mobile app issue or myflock.com website issue. So my first tendency is, well, how can I help these guys in a timely fashion? Right. And we certainly, you know, if you've got an emergency and you're calling us, you know, you, you definitely need, if we don't pick up, you need to leave a voicemail saying, hey, you know, I've got an emergency here. I'm streaming this Tuesday night service and it's not working. We'll definitely respond, but I think there are some things that we just honestly, it, it may have to wait <laughs> because, you know, but, but my tendency is to try to pick up and handle the thing and, and for a couple different reasons. One is to help the customer. The other thing too is I think if I don't get it now, I'm going to have to get it later. Right. So I'm thinking, oh, I'll just do it now. And that way I won't have a pile of stuff to do tomorrow, you know? And so, but again, that can come back to bite you as a person as you know because you're trying to spend time with your family or you're trying to disconnect and there's and we don't have any paperwork here on this but i've also read that being online all the time can also create more stress and more mental fatigue and even mental illness by being connected all the time because mm-hmm. you're just not made that way you're not you're not hooked up to be wired up all the time to something all right so all right so we got about 5 minutes here Uh, why don't we jump into some quick little tips on how you could even help yourself. If you have a job where you're always at the computer or you're online a lot, uh, you know, how can you kind of break the addiction here or at least uh, make things healthier? One of the things that somebody wrote down here that I picked up was drinking lots of water. (laughs) (laughs) That's a twofold uh, benefit, right? Exactly. Well, I, apparently the person said if you keep yourself hydrated, first of all, if you make yourself drink a lot of water, you're going to have to get up and get water unless it, you've got the huge fountain right next to your computer. Right. Uh, and then the other option would be after you drink all that water, you got to go to the bathroom. Your bladder is only going to be able to handle so much. Right. So the exactly. idea behind this is it will help you 
get up, stretch, get away from the computer, get offline a little bit, unless you're like me and you take Instagram in to the bathroom with you. <laughs> okay. But it actually says here in the notes that we've got here is don't take your iPhone with you. <laughs> All right. So that's one little thing. Uh, what's another little tip we can share with you? So one, another one that I mentioned before we started recording is you know, there's software tools there's, you know, right. that will help um, keep you from going online. I mentioned as we started talking about there was an author that was working on a book and found that um, it's just it's so easy to get pulled into the vortex of oh let, let's go check my email let's go into Facebook let's uh, you know check the weather whatever and next thing you know you're 25 pages and 30 minutes off into some crazy land so there's software tools that you can install on your computer that will um, say you know from eight to five o'clock today I do not want to go to facebook.com and so the software will prevent them from getting to a particular website or, or websites or doing certain activities on their computer uh, so, during specified times so is this the, what this is is this open dns.com is that what that is it's um, something like that it's a free service called open dns.com have you heard uh, about that uh, I have not heard about that but I think oh, setting up open DNS, I think that's that will just allow you to go in and block certain sites. This other one's okay. a little more user friendly in that it would, because you don't have to block them and okay. then then unblock them when you did want to get to them. There's these other services. Okay. I wish I had the name of. Uh, there's a couple of competing ones and I can't remember the names of them right now. All right. That will just just say, hey, um, you know, I'm gonna. I, I don't right. want to be able to do this during these hours, and you can um, set up some. Of course, some you can always that, go back in there and. Change it, but here one of the tips that somebody has here is, you know, you could get this software that you're talking about, but have someone else set the password right, so for you, you, so you don't have access to the password. Right. Woo, that's uh, putting your life into somebody else's hands. Yeah. But I guess it depends on how serious you are. Yeah. About breaking this thing. Yeah, and I think it just takes a little nudge to keep people. Oh, I didn't want to go there. I'm not going to get drawn into the vortex. Right. And. You know, if there was life and death where you had to get to some online tool, you've... Yeah. All right. You've, so we're, we're really about out of time here. We've been talking about, you know, this whole thing online. And, and, and I think, you know, I didn't pull the stats out about this, but I think most of us would agree that being online too much is not a good thing. And it takes away from our relationships. Uh, I mean, there's positive things, too. I mean, I, you know, I have Facebook friends from all over the country places I used to live, churches I used to pastor, off-road clubs I used to be a part of. And it's great to connect, catch up with those people and see them. And, and I've even reconnected with a few. But again, it's all things in moderation, right? right. It's kind of that biblical thing. Uh, take all things in moderation. So I, I would think that, that where you're at right now is your online time you know, adding to your relationships? Is it adding to your family or is it distracting? Is it taking away? Right. And I think that's the bottom line. So uh, here we are, a tech company that has all our stuff online. And we're but, saying get offline occasionally. Yeah. But I think it's true. I, th I think and I think probably I would say daily, like you said at the beginning, Steve, take some time out every day to not be online. Maybe before you go to bed, spend some time, quality time when you're not online. Um, or maybe in the morning, spend some time when you're not online so you can set your day without the influence of emails and everything else. And then maybe even consider a few hours on a Sunday or something right? or Saturday. Yeah. It's a, a, a quote that uh, I think is somewhat often quoted, but you know, email can be considered everyone else's priority. It comes to you. So one way to, you know, kind of enforce your own priorities during the day is set up some offline time where you're mm -hmm. not being tugged by everyone else's priorities. Yeah. And I think you'll find your life more fulfilling. You'll probably have more peace in your life. Okay, so, folks, we are on iTunes, so go check us out on iTunes under Church Solutions Podcast. We'd love to hear from you. Give us a review. 
um, give us, you know, a rate us. And we'd love, to, we'd love it if you do that. Just go to iTunes and search for Church Solutions Podcast. We're also online uh, on newmediaministries.tv as we continue to talk about being online. Mm-hmm. And we have a YouTube channel and, uh, and we've mentioned the websites. But, uh, but we'd love to hear from you. So if you have a topic you'd like us to discuss, maybe you want to add to this topic, maybe you don't agree, maybe you do agree, we'd love to hear from you. The email is support at streamingchurch.tv. My name is Phil Thompson. And I'm Steve Lacey. Thanks for being with us, folks. We appreciate you. And catch us next time for another edition of Church Solutions Podcast. Take care.